This lesson will cover cuprates. Cuprates are organometallic reagents with unique reactivity. Cuprates can be made from other organometallic reagents. Alkyl lithiums, like this propyl lithium here, can be reacted with copper iodide. This generates the cuprate and a molecule of lithium iodide salt. Notice that two of the alkyl groups become associated with the copper when making the cuprate. So we'll need two equivalents of this starting material. Now this is a great reaction when you can buy your alkyl lithium or maybe generate it in one step. But when you're synthesizing a more complex reagent in the lab that perhaps you want to convert into a cuprate, you probably don't want to go this route. There ends up being two alkyl groups on here, but only one is transferred in the reaction. So if your material is a little bit more precious, you might want to generate your cuprate from a Grignard. So to synthesize this, you probably made the corresponding bromide, treated it with magnesium metal in dry ether, and got this reagent. Now say you want it to have the reactivity of a cuprate and not a Grignard reagent. Treating this Grignard reagent with catalytic amounts of copper iodide will create a cuprate in situ in your reaction flask. Okay, now we know how to make these, but why would we want to make these? Let's look at the unique reactions that cuprates can perform. Cuprates participate in cross-coupling reactions. In this reaction, the copper can insert itself into this carbon-bromine bond. The copper eliminates itself, and basically we get these two pieces stitched together. This reaction retains the geometry at the alkene and allows us to form a carbon-carbon bond. Now, this doesn't have to contain an alkene. We can use a lot of alkyl halides in this cross-coupling reaction. And it's important to note that if you treat an alkyl halide with a Grignard reagent, you're going to have elimination reactions happening, not this cool reaction where the pieces come together. So that's one way that cuprates are unique from Grignard reagents. The cross-coupling reaction even works with acid chlorides. These two pieces will combine and the group from our cuprate replaces the chlorine on the acid chloride. Now remember that Grignards and alkyl lithium reagents nucleophilically attack at carbonyls, and we would never really want to react them with an acid chloride because acid chlorides are way too reactive anyway. So we would expect nucleophilic attack if we did that reaction. But here instead, the carbonyl stays intact. We can replace the chlorine with this group smoothly and in good yield. Cuprates, like organolithiums and Grignard reagents, can be used to open epoxides. Just like the other organometallic reagents, the cuprate attacks at the least sterically hindered carbon atom opening up the epoxide, and the arrow pushing looks like this. This produces an alkoxide that can be treated with water in an aqueous workup to give the alcohol. The final reaction I want to tell you about is conjugate addition. This molecule, in enone, has a carbonyl in conjugation with a double bond. Now let's review the reaction that would happen when we treat this with a Grignard reagent or an alkyl lithium. When we treat this with butyl lithium, the carbonyl will be attacked, producing an alkoxide, and we can add in a second step in aqueous workup to protonate that and make an alcohol. So the final compound has the double bond intact and has added a butyl group to the carbonyl, converting it into an alcohol. But cuprates do something very different. Cuprates instead do conjugate addition, or 1,4 addition. They attack at this terminal carbon at the end of the conjugated system. The arrow pushing looks like this. So our cuprate has added here. This double bond has shifted over, and we push the electrons up onto oxygen. This compound is protonated and reforms the ketone. And one way to show the arrow pushing is like this.
Now, the reason we see this difference is because alkyl lithiums and Grignard reagents, they have a lot of ionic character in the bond. And so we have like a C minus, and it's got a counter ion. It's balanced with that lithium. But the bond here has very little covalent character. It has quite a lot of ionic character. And so it's going to be attracted to the carbonyl because the carbonyl has this dipole that puts a delta minus on the oxygen and a delta plus on the carbon. So this addition is governed by ionic interactions with this dipole here. Whereas the cuprate has a lot less ionic character. It has more covalent character in this carbon-copper bond. So this reaction is actually governed by orbital overlap. So we get good orbital interactions with this soft nucleophile at this terminal carbon atom. The differences in reactivity here are pretty cool. We can actually react butyl lithium or a corresponding Grignard reagent and have it attack at the carbonyl, leaving the double bond intact. If we use the cuprate, we lose our double bond but still have our carbonyl. To sum up, cuprates are organometallic reagents that can be made from other organometallic reagents. They have unique reactivity where they can take alkyl halides and couple them with another alkyl piece forming carbon-carbon bonds. Like alkyl lithiums and Grignard reagents, they can open epoxides at the least hindered side, producing alcohols. And finally, with enones, they have completely different reactivity, adding at this terminal carbon of the conjugated system instead of at the carbonyl. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.